Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Scott Derrickson's Sinister in 2012. Um, <clears throat> so, um, another horror film review. And yes, it's just this time, uh, Sinister. Now, Scott Derrickson um, co-wrote this film and directed it. And uh, yeah, the only other film I've seen of him from him is Doctor Strange. Um, and really, that's one of the only um, MCU films that I'm not actually a big fan of, really. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was okay, um, nothing more. So, you know, I've not really got anything else to go by. I've not seen any other films. Um, but this is a rewatch. Um, <clears throat> you know, I saw this um, first started in 2013. I think I watched um, it again, uh, all of it again, if not um, just most of it um, before that. And then this is the third, basically the third viewing. <clears throat> and yes, you know, it's it's, um, it's not too acclaimed. Um, and, you know, it's got more of a cult following than anything, really. Um, it's not, you know, that acclaimed, that, that love, really. Um, but it is... Yeah, Ethan Hawke. Um, Ethan Hawke is actually one of my favourite actors of all time. <clears throat> I've not really mentioned him too much on my channel. Uh, really because I've not really got into Linklater yet um, in his films. Uh, and, you know, the Before Trilogy and Boyhood, actually. You know, that hated film, uh, you know, that came out uh, a few years ago. Um, basically, that, them films, all, all four of them films, <clears throat> are actually in my, you know, very high on my favourite films list. You know, I will reveal, of course, how high um, when I review them. And, um, of course, when I eventually get to my favourite films list. Um, but, yes, um, Ethan Hawke, in my eyes, is one of the greatest actors of all time. <clears throat> I think he's fantastic in, in you know, most things. And, yes, this film, um, he's the protagonist um, of Ellison. Um, and, basically, he's got a wife called Tracy. And, you know, two kids. <clears throat> and they basically move in to this house uh, at the beginning of the film. And he's a crime writer, um, you know, so... Yeah, it all kind of ties in, we'll get to that, but... They move into this home and um, basically they discover, <coughs> you know, these, um, well, Ellison discovers um, these tapes. Now, um, of course, they're in the attic in this box and he discovers them and he starts uh, looking through them um, on his projector. Um, and basically he just slowly unravels, <coughs> you know, these, these um, kind of snuff films of these actual murders that have taken taken place um, and, you know, from quite a few years ago, meant, meant to be in the film. And basically there's this um, <coughs> weird guy, um, you know, and uh, kind of going around doing it and he's, he's seen, you know, in different parts of the footage. Um, and yeah, all these families getting murdered basically. Um, and <coughs> the rest of the film is basically him unraveling this. And he kind of forms a friendship um, with the deputy, played by James uh, Ransone um, as well. Vincent D'Onofrio, uh, basically he plays um, a professor in the film. <coughs> and he basically helps him with the investigations um, a little bit as well. Uh, kind of gives some exposition on the occults um, that kind of tie into the, the kind of things that he's seeing, the kind of symbols and stuff um, that are on the tapes. Um, so it's all very <coughs> interesting stuff, um, you know, and uh, the first hour of the film, I will say, is um, very, very good, um, and <coughs> maybe just over the hour mark, um, and, you know, it's something that um, I was thinking, wow, actually, this is better than I remembered. Um, you know, I did, I did like it the first time, uh, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but I didn't, you know, really, really like it. I didn't, certainly didn't love it. You know, I could, you could say at moments I did love this um, in the first sort of hour or so. And then, of course, I'll quickly, you know, I'll say it now, I'll kind of spoil this for the kind of end score. Um, it went down, um, and that is the second half of the film. <clears throat> Mainly the last 40 minutes, uh, really. But um, basically, by the end of the film, I kind of thought, yeah, that's why I didn't um, love it. Because it does let it down, it's, it lets itself down in the, the kind of... Um, the last 40 minutes of the film and it kind of becomes um, a lot of the kind of well it falls into the traps that a lot of um, modern horror films do <clears throat> you know kind of generic tropes and a lot of jump scares uh, cheap ones and it's a shame it really is when a film does this but it just comes down to lack of control really and just I suppose um, feeling like as a filmmaker you have to um, do this um, you know horror films <clears throat> fall into these jump scare kind of things and all this stuff um, and it's a shame because it was really, really, really smart. Smart um, in terms of the filmmaking and the way it built built the atmosphere in the first half of the film. Uh, the characters were, were really, really good, especially even Hawke's character of Ellison, <coughs> and um, you know the deputy as well, of course, um, played by James Ransone. Um, and of course, he's in. You know, um, if you recognise him, <coughs> if you've seen The Wire, um, he plays um, Ziggy in The Wire, um, season two mainly. And yeah, it was good to good to see him um, after I've now seen The Wire because um, you know I saw it first saw it um, The Wire in 
2016. Um, so, yeah, I've seen it a couple of times now, and, and you know, it's uh, one of my favourite shows. So it's great to see him in the film, and he was a really good character, um, the deputy, <coughs> I would say, in the first first half of the film. Because uh, most of the stuff I can really, really praise is in the first half. And unfortunately, you know, it has been kind of agreed on, actually. A lot of people do say this, that the second half is no one as good. I have to agree. Um, and it's a real shame. Um, it just kind of, as well, we'll start with this from start, so, you know, it's very, very... Um, patient film um, and I was really <clears throat> just getting invested in these characters um, the whole kind of um, way this guy Ellison is a writer um, it's just done in a really good way the exposition is great <clears throat> I feel that he was just a really compelling character um, you know and a kind of a, kind of a peaceful character um, and you know I loved uh, the family scenes uh, very warm and touching um, and you know the wife wasn't great it wasn't a great character but in the first half <clears throat> at least they had more of a um, a realistic relationship. In the second half, she becomes becomes just a kind of whiny kind of uh, person, and then just um, someone that is just <clears throat> you know in the end just um, telling them not to do you know go ahead with his passions, and just kind of uh, just shouting at him really. Um, and they have some arguments, and you know it doesn't it never really went anywhere, and it kind of just undone a lot of the stuff <clears throat> you know that happened, um, and just took away from you know this unique character, the, the traits that he had. It kind of just gave in in the end, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, um, the first half, I just really liked it. You know, I think at times there were some there were some great moments. Um, I thought the way it built up this this um, kind of um, this serial killer and um, basically the way that the kind of uh, Ethan Hawke, his character um, of Ellison, kind of sees these tapes uh, and it involves you straight away with these, um, you know, these tapes. It's very very disturbing stuff. <clears throat> you know, it's um, very. Um, very involving, uh, just the way kind of um, he's in the room and everything, and then the actual tapes themselves, um, very chilling horror stuff. Um, you know, it's very, very, very effective, um, and just the, the atmosphere it builds um, is really stunning, uh, actually. And of course, just uh, shocking stuff, um, and the way that he's kind of um, he's got a family. <clears throat> you know, he kind of you see the value there, and, and the kind of humanity comes through, um, and of course, um, yeah, just some some really. Uh, warm family moments, um, and uh, you know I just really love this character of uh, Ellison um, and the deputy as well. Um, there was one or two odd moments early on um, which I didn't quite get. <clears throat> one of the other cops, um, just the way he kind of um, confronts him and just basically tells him to to get out of the town more or less straight away. Um, it's a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit heavy-handed uh, for my liking. <clears throat> I just felt. Really, was a bit off. Um, just a bit. I don't know if that would have actually. It's hard to see that happening in that way, um, you know. And then just on this occasion, it just didn't come across uh, great. But apart from that, you know, <clears throat> there was this great horror um, stuff. Really, filmmaking, the direction was was great actually. Um, quite a lot of the time, the cinematography was was really uh, something else actually, for a horror film. <clears throat> the editing was great, um, and I loved. I just loved how involving it was, you know, and uh, as well patient it was, you know, it had some, um, some quiet moments, um, and of course, just the way it involves you in this horror, um, you know, this kind of the serial, uh, the killings, um, it is very, very scary, <clears throat> you know, without having these jump scares, and that was great, you know, actually something that, that kind of gets under your skin, um, and because, of it, because it is kind of very much rooted in reality, this one, as well, you know, stuff that, as well, the way it's portrayed, could it easily happen to anyone, <clears throat> you know, and the way that he's kind of, um, he's got this family, um, already and the way that he sees all these these families getting killed is very very disturbing uh, stuff actually and um, you know something that you can kind of, kind of um, gets under your skin and then you know he starts seeing things um, in the tapes and even at that point it was very very scary stuff um, you know and um, just other moments that were just really shocking actually and um, but weren't overdone you know they weren't um, stupid there was no jump scares really uh, at all and um, you know, I was more concerned with characters, with atmosphere, <clears throat> and actually the humanity of all the, these killings, you know, what was happening there. And Ethan Hawke, you know, just a really, really good performance, I thought, just throughout the film, actually, you know, he never really, in the second half, um, got too much worse, just wasn't um, his character, <clears throat> you could say his character was, um, you know, the writing went downhill a bit, I think, um, but his performance throughout the film was very, very good, um, definitely. And as well, um, you know the the supporting cast I thought was really good. You know the character of Tracy, <coughs> he's not a 
not a great character as I say, but, but fine. Um, and you know, but in the second half, she does fall into that kind of generic kind of sort of kind of character that's telling uh, someone to kind of <clears throat> that it's it's not real and all this sort of stuff, and just to give up, you know, kind of things. And it was just a bit, bit frustrating actually, um, to say the least. But in the first half, as I say, you know, everything was really really good. At times, great. Um, I was really liking the cinematography. The, the sound design was really really um, effective, you know, the creepiness as well, <coughs> you know, of, of, the, of the music use. Um, great, you know, and the actual tapes themselves, the way they're constructed, um, it's kind of like The Ring, um, of course. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of that film, actually, The Ring, but, <coughs> you know, this film, uh, it's, it's kind of like the way that they use the tapes to build the, the, the sense of dread. Um, and um, then, you know, when he comes back to actually, you know, the normal world, um, the stuff that does happen is even more effective in the scares um, because you've kind of been <coughs> you've been disturbed uh, if you know what I mean and um, just the simple even just slight sounds in the house you know when he's in, he's in there um, it just kind of gets to you you know makes you even more jumpy um, and but there wasn't any actual <coughs> cheap jump scares um, in the first half um, and you know I just I really um, liked the way that the story unfolded um, you know I, I think the writing was very good um, and then we get to the <coughs> around the hour and five mark, if I'm you know counting you know exactly. This is when the film starts to go downhill. Um, I feel, and uh, basically, it does become a lot more generic. Um, you know, the, the kind of character development is a bit um, pushed to the back seat. You know, it doesn't. <coughs> it's not quite as, as good. And actually, the characters, um, what they, what they kind of do with the characters, um, you know, especially Ellison, um, is kind of weaken them um, and I feel that just the way he gives in as well and stuff um, in the end it's just certain things um, just makes him yeah a weaker character in that second half and um, you've not really got any of these the, the stuff uh, that was really just compelling um, and kind of <coughs> kind of peaceful at times as well you can kind of relate to it's him going through these tapes you know and, and kind of just uh, writing things down and just investigating uh, in this you know the last 40 minutes of the film it turns into um, just this bit of a cheap kind of dumb horror film at times, and you know his character takes a backseat. He's kind of this um, this guy just going through through the house in that sense, just getting scared. Uh, just kind of a, a kind of a, yeah, just a way a ploy to kind of device really. He's a device to, to let us get scared, jump scared quite a lot frequently. You know, there's these kids that pop up. You know, these um, kind of <coughs> kids that are in the appear in the videos and they can't start appearing and jump scaring and it just um you know i think some of the makeup's good and everything like that um and the actual again the sound design in the second half is still good and everything but the way that the uh, the manner of the horror elements uh in the second half it's just it's not that impressive um and unfortunately it does get to the kind of horror that annoys me nowadays um and it's a shame because it was it was really really good this film um and, you know, at the end of the day, and it did have some great moments, um, but because of that last 40 minutes of the film, you know, it wasn't bad, um, definitely not, but that, you know, last 40 minutes was probably pretty average, I would say, um, and it evened out to, to a merely good film, um, and that's a shame, because it would have been a lot more than that, um, you know, it could have been the high end of the 80% mark, um, really, actually, it's nearing into the greatness, um, wasn't quite there. <clears throat> for me, maybe, um, but at times it was, you know, and I think that the characters were really good, everything like that, the writing, um, and just the way they was very patient, um, and they didn't, didn't insult, um, you know, as a viewer, um, but then you, you, when you see more of this kind of um, villain, um, you know, it just kind of, <clears throat> it makes it less scary, um, and, you know, the actual, the way that the kids are all running about the house and kind of just appearing and stuff, again, that word was just laughable. Um, unfortunately, I cannot take a lot of this stuff seriously, um, and that's a shame. And that kind of just lets, makes it less scary. Um, and a lot of horror films do this, um, <clears throat> not just modern horrors, um, but you know, more and more is revealed, um, and kind of everything is given up, um, and then it becomes less scary, uh, less disturbing. Um, there's, there's there's films that uh, never do, you know that actually perfect this um, in, in the second half, the final act. And um, you know, come through as a complete piece of horror, and never fall, and never give in to, to the cheapness um, and the easy way out. Um, I think The Shining, uh, Stanley Kubrick, is a perfect example um, of a filmmaker who just um, 
carries through with what he wants to do and he never um, goes all out mental and, uh, and just cheap stuff at the end you know and it's never generic um, and the vision just is consistent throughout um, in this film it's just a case once again of the opposite where <clears throat> it falls apart really a lot of the time in the first in the second act of the film or the last act really uh, most of the second half um, and you know just uh, it's just a shame uh, he starts uh, Ethan Holt's character of Ellison starts to do things that are a bit out of character um, and just make him for a, a weak um, protagonist in the end not in, you know overall but <clears throat> you know the actual way it pans out in the final act uh, he's not great um, really there as a character um, and just as well you've not got as much of the, the other character relationships um, you know wrapped up really uh, at all with the deputy um, and that was a shame because he was a really good character um, and then you've got the stuff with Tracy was <coughs> it's kind of um, basic you know generic the way they just have an argument and stuff that kind of just got cut off um, and as well the, the, the stuff with the children um, wasn't really you know, his actual children wasn't really followed through too well, and in the end, it just becomes something that doesn't really make sense. Um, and of course, it's one of the ones that doesn't really have to, because you know, um, I, I, I guess no one really cares in the end. They've been scared. They've had the jump scares, you know, the all-out kind of um, explosive finale, and uh, yeah, it's never really followed through <coughs> a lot of the actual storylines and everything. And it's a shame, you know. And the actual ending, very, very cheap. I hate endings where someone just comes at the camera um, right at the end shot. It annoys me um, a lot. Um, as well as Insidious Freed on that. And it was just just stupid. Cheap. <clears throat> it's a real shame. Um, this film was a lot more than that uh, you know, up until a point. Uh, but overall, you know, it's a good film. I think it's solid still. I did, um, you know, like it overall. Uh, I could, you could say I almost really liked it overall, but mainly the first first hour and five minutes you could say um i was i was almost loving you know at times i was and um <clears throat> you know i was thinking wow you know this is underrated um you know maybe if it falls apart in the second half like people say it would be you know it would be a shame but it doesn't seem like it's gonna and then it does um <clears throat> it just annoys me the direction um you know the film went and um what it kind of what it didn't it didn't ruin the whole film but it did definitely um, weaken it and um, to an overall score that <clears throat> really is a, is a lot less than what I could have given it and it's a shame but you know it is, yeah it is a shame um, you know I was really liking the lighting and everything like that and um, the locations you know had a real sense of um, place um, <clears throat> but yeah ultimately um, you know it is just a good film so overall I think Sinister um, I'd have to give it a 76% um, and now that is a good film uh, from me Solid film, um, unfortunately nothing more. Um, Scott Derrickson, you know, I think um, for most of the film it was really well directed by him. But it did fall apart um, and it's a shame. Um, the writing was just not as good in the second half, um, what they'd done with some of the characters, <coughs> especially Ellison um, and the kind of the way that they just, um, yeah, made him a bit more unlikable and just um, inconsistent in, in that second half um, as well. The way that he just, he, uh, Derrickson kind of just fell into the, the traps of a lot of uh, horror films and just uh, yeah, like he feels like he has to give these jump scares to the audience um, and it's a shame, um, it really is. Um, you know, the performance as well by James uh, Ransom was really, really good and then he kind of disappeared. Um, and the kind of last scene with him in it as well, there was some stuff I didn't really like how that panned out and everything like that because it was really, really good, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I love some, some moments in that first half, um, but the second half really falters. When the actual villain, the monster, <coughs> you could say, is, is more and more shown, and then he starts appearing and jump scaring everyone, um, that's when it really does um, just become quite annoying. Um, and all the kids, um, you know, the way that they <coughs> they kind of run about the house and everything. It's just a disappointing um, final act, and you know, you could say a bit more than the final act. Um, it's a shame. Um, I feel that the um, you know, Scott Derrickson, for me, um, this happened, but even more early on uh, with Doctor Strange. Um, actually, you know, I think uh, that film started off really, really good. The first half an hour, I'll say, <coughs> for that um, was very, very good, um, very human. And then the rest of the film just just went downhill. Um, 
it's a shame, you know, and uh, kind of similar patterns here, but the <coughs> the greatness um, or the you know stuff that's very very good is maintained for a lot longer. Um, so really, overall, it is a good film. <laughs> doing the maths, um, doing the way I, I kind of work out my score system, um, you know, it is a good film. I did enjoy it overall. Um, and I really really enjoyed um, at times loved, as I say, the first hour and five minutes. Um, but I definitely recommend this film. Um, you know, it is. You know, I suppose overall it's a bit bit underrated. Um, I say that, you know, it's not massively, uh, now that I've seen the whole film uh, again. It's clear, <coughs> you know, that, you know, I, I can understand how people would be very annoyed with this film, the way it goes, the direction it takes, um, because it really stood out, actually, um, among, you know, a lot of horror films um, in around, you know, a kind of a few couple of years, you know, the span of that, uh, you know, 2012. There wasn't a lot of uh, great horrors, um, and you know there wasn't. Um, there's still not loads and loads of great horrors, but there's been a bit more of a <coughs> resurgence and back to form uh, since maybe 2014. Because uh, as I said before many times, you know, from 2005 really um, for almost a decade, there was a big, big dip actually, and probably the lowest point of horror <coughs> has ever been um, for me. And um, you know, the 80s started to bring in more franchise horrors, um, of course, but. There was still a lot of great horrors, and actually some of the best in the 80s, but um, and the 90s as well. But then, of course, yeah, just a lot of, um, as I say, the midpoint of the 2000s, um, you know, it brought in a lot of generic and cheap cheap horrors um, that really um, flooded um, a lot of, of cinema. And uh, <coughs> yeah, this kind of, um, the second half falls into that. The first half and, and more um, does not, and it really stood out. But yeah, overall, good film, highly recommend it. Um, you know, check it out and see. Because, you know, <clears throat> not everyone's going to feel the same. Um, so you might really enjoy it, um, despite the, the final act. Um, but yeah, you know, Ethan Hawke, really good performance, um, of course. And uh, yeah, it's a, overall a solid film. And um, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching my review of Sinister.